You can begin. You are on mute, Brother Menzi. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm on mute. Sorry, yes. I'm busy speaking and I'm on mute. Excuse me about that. Okay, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Sanibona, Hotep, Hetepu, Utwapu. All those words just basically means peace be upon you. Uthula Mahube Nani in my mother's tongue. Uh, the name is Menti Masego for Ikambi Natural Healing. Uh, I am with my sisters Nelly Siwetaba and Nelly Kosi. Uh, we are introducing the Sekhmet season. Uh, yes, uh, the goddess Sekhmet. Um, so we are going to begin. I, I'm not sure. I think my sister Nelly is supposed to do us the do the pledge, or should I first do the breathing, the breathing opening? Is that how it goes, uh, ladies? Ah, uh, yes. The I breathe, breathe first. The breathing okay, and then afterwards we need the healer's pledge, the word that basically edifies us and gives us a um, confirmation and affirmation of Oguti. What we are doing here is not about ourselves, but it's a sacred calling and it's a sacred uh, uh, offering to nature and to our communities, um, which need healing. We all do. So I will start very, very, very simple breathing exercise, um, uh, which basically, it's just a, a breathing meditation. So we're going to take three deep breaths, just three deep breathing. You take one deep breath in, and you hold it, and you let it go. When you breathe in, you let your stomach Go out and you expand your diaphragm. You breathe in deeply. Hold the breath. Free your mind. Let go. Be in the moment. And then you let go. Take the third breath. Deep breath in. We hold it. We welcome our ancestors, we welcome the pure ones. Is it Hunyua? That's Magiti. The national spirit and the personal spirit. And we let in God. We let go. And then we just take one deep breath. We relax our shoulders and then take another one. Hold it. In our mind, we give thanks for being present. And we are present in mind, body, and soul in this place. We let go. We give thanks for life and we give thanks for this moment and for all the lessons that are going to pour out in this round table conversation between Ikambi, Natural Healing, and the people, our community. Welcome, everyone. Uh, Makosi. I'm not sure. I think maybe someone needs to turn off their mute their mic. I'm not sure. There's a kind of a hiss. But Mankosi is going to lead us in the healer's pledge, which we all recite. Um, just give me a second. I need to open up the pledge. Okay. Um. Uh, what about did you send it? Um, yes, I sent it to our admin group. Oh, it's on the phone. Sorry, here I am looking for it on the laptop. Uh, can you please share it from your side? Um, and then I will recite. I will recite. Um, I don't if, yours, have it. if yours is not ready, I can recite it for you, Coco. If you don't mind, okay. it's on my side, but it's not on the laptop. It's on the laptop. Okay, sorry. I will recite it. You will carry on with it. You, you will reintroduce us into the session. So let me just read the pledge so that uh, we make better use of time. So uh, the Healer's Pledge is basically our code of conduct for the group and for everyone joining us. The code of conduct and, a, and an affirmation of what we are doing. So it goes like this. Um, Singabela, we are healers. And we all recite together. 
We owe our gifts to nature, our ancestor, and our creator. We owe our gifts to nature, our ancestors, and our creator. We live by the principles of Ma'at Uno Ubuntu. We live by the principles of Ma'at Ma'at. We will approach each other with respect, honesty, and compassion. We will approach each other with respect, honesty, and compassion. We will offer our advice, recommendations, and ideas with trust. We will offer our advice, recommendations, and ideas with trust. We will neither insult, dishonor, nor abuse one another. We will neither insult, dishonor, nor abuse one another. We will share, practice, will share, practice promote, and raise awareness about natural healing. We will share, practice, promote, promote, and raise awareness, awareness about natural healing. About natural healing. Healthy lifestyles and well being. Healthy lifestyles and well being. We will refrain from posting negative information. We will refrain from posting negative information. We will refrain from posting irrelevant information and falsehood. We will refrain from posting negative and, and. Api, we are the healers. Singabela Singabela Api, we are the healers. Our gifts are a gift to humanity and nature. Our gifts are a gift to humanity and nature. And nature. And nature. We will give back to nature what she has abundantly given us. I'm handing over now to Mangos. Uh, greetings, everybody. Uh, my name is Nelly Kosi. Uh, unfortunately, today, when every time I switch on the camera, I freeze. So I can't, I don't know. The God, God, the gods don't want me to. They don't want you to see my face today. So <laughs> ninkolele. Angam pinge, angam ba noma kaba. Um, u u neli siwe kaba. She will introduce herself. Greetings, everybody. Um, thank you, Mangose. Um, I'm Neli siwe kaba. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us this beautiful Sunday for us to just share and to continue the healing amongst each other. So um, let's get this, let's get the session started. Um, Kulumenzi, can you please take us through and, and, and introduce us to Umama, Lo Oliviana. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, hey, you know, Mama, Lo. Yeah, I don't even know. I want to give her the word Mama, but it's fine. She's our Mama. Not about Mama. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's full of fire. Yeah, so yeah, anyway, yeah. In a nutshell, look, 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 Mama. As our poster says, uh, we say she is the first healer, and she is the goddess of sacred uh, of the of the healing fire, right? So what do we mean when we say the healing fire? But let's first start with uh, uh, before we define the the, the the her aspects. Let's just begin with the basic understanding of what, what when we talk about all these schematic uh, neter. We call them neteru uh, in uh, in plural. Uh, in the West, they have a tendency to call this African uh, side, uh, this African uh, natural forces gods, because they are used to uh, ama supernatural power, calling their supernatural powers gods. But in Africa per se, we don't really believe in gods. We just use the word gods or goddesses. We only use those words in the form of, but in English it can be very limited in its uh, in how it describes certain things which are of which are indigenous to other uh, cultures. So when we speak of uh, a, a god, a so-called goddess or a natural force uh, by the name of Sekhmet, 
uh, 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 who has a woman's body in her appearance, uh, in her depictions, uh, art, articulated depictions or the creative uh, drawings of, of our ancient elders in, 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 in the Nile Valley or in Kemen or Egypt. She has a female body. She wears a scarlet robe, sometimes orange, most, some, mostly red, and, and, and sometimes white underneath. But she's always robed in scarlet or red. Uh, and her head is the head of a lioness. Uh, she's got so and she carries on her uh, on her hand a scepter or a sword or a knife a cutting knife uh, some say it's a surgeon's knife for surgery uh, some say it's a knife or a sword or in camber of destruction oh uh, we say it's both uh, she carries both a, 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 a destruction in her hand and she also carries a, a, a healing uh, sometimes when something is inside the flesh the flesh needs to be cut surgically so that you can get to the point and heal a particular point inside. So part of uh, her, her powers is that she can be destructive when it's necessary, she can be protective when it's necessary, and she can also perform surgery when it's necessary. Uh, we will get in, in our conversation, we will explain how, how does she perform surgery. So now these uh, ancient kemetic uh, natural powers, ancient African natural powers, which are depicted as Senat is half half moon to half Isiluan or half animal and half a, 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 a human. They are basically, uh, I would say, poetic descriptions of the power within that particular natural force. I call it. We call it natural force because the word itself, neter, uh, 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 which the West translates as gods or, or, or forces. The word neter itself means power of nature power of nature so these natural powers our ancient elders in order to tell the story to children and to people who are not familiar with the story they will describe the story in almost a poetic or metaphys metaphysical and metaphorical form and Usekmet was described as someone who has destructive powers like a fierce lioness but she's a fierce lioness that comes from according to the story comes from the the, 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 the the supernatural force of the sun so she comes from the sun so she carries both the fierce power of the lion of the lioness but she also carries the fierce power of the sun now we know about the sun the sun is both destructive if it's too much it, it can cause the drought uh, if it's not balanced with the other natural powers water moisture the earth and all the centrifugal powers this so who segment comes from the sun which in ancient egypt the sun spirit is called ra so she was sent by Ra on earth to cause destruction upon those that were not learning the natural lessons and following the natural law. So she gets sent here to destroy. And as she destroys, she gets called back. I'm, I'm summarizing a long story. She gets called back to say, no, you have caused too much destruction. It is time now to heal the people. In Zulu we say, which means uh, the one that refuses instruction uh, can only learn by being struck or by being punished. So, segment represents both the punishment of God, but she also represents the mercy of God, the mercy of the Creator, uh, which in ancient Egypt was described as the sun, this, the energy of the sun, which is Ra, right? So she comes from Ra, she's the daughter of Ra, and there's a whole lot of stories related to her. We will get into it during our conversation. So that is segment. We are celebrating her in this season because in Ikambi we do everything according to uh, the, the natural powers that govern each of the seasons. And so the season we are entering in right now, the 23rd of May, is the season of Sekhmet, the divine natural power of, dis of, of divine punishment, divine destruction, and also divine healing and divine uh, transformation. So that's, the, the, that's where we're at right now from the 23rd of May until 22nd of June, if I'm not mistaken. I was on correct so that they wait. So that's what we are on now, and we're going to speak about it and explain how that relates to our lives, our spiritual lives, and our actual uh, lived experiences as African people. Thank you. Oh, you, can, you are free to have questions later, by the way, about everything that I'm saying. We will answer the questions later in our conversation. Uh, my club or anyone. <laughs> okay, um, Mangosi, I think you want to go. It's fine. 
No, it's it's okay. I think what Umenzi is saying is um, it's like wow, we are in the month of the healer today, this month, and we really need to acknowledge the first the first healer. And for me, based on the mythology, the take out is is that there's a duality that I am seeing about this healing aspect as to what it means about being a healer. There's a duality. The fiery one, the fire has like the power to heal, but also it can destroy you as well as the people around and, and the people around you. Yeah. Thank you, Mangos. Um, I think, you know, that's the one thing that I really appreciate about um, comedic study, African study is what I would, I would actually uh, view it as, is that we start to now really understand who we are on such a deep level and understand that things are a balance, things are polarity. There's no just one side, there's two sides of the coin. And in every, as we are getting into each season and we are unpacking it internally for ourselves and together as a community, it's very um, important to realize that there's no one way, you know, there's a good side and there's also a bad side. And as Sehmet comes as the lady of terror, she also comes as the lady of life. And that is such an important thing to always remember, because I think we are always in a tug of war with each other based on how the system has programmed us, that everything must be completely good, must pure. be completely pure. <laughs> but in the impurities lies the purity. And to also eradicate yourself of the impurities takes fire and takes a deep and a painful healing that must occur. Um, so that's what I have, what I resonate, I resonate deeply with Sehmet simply because of how it's not pretty. You know, sometimes you always get the pretty aspect of Oset. Oset for me is pretty and gentle. She's the mother. But for me, I feel Sehmet is the true mother because we are Wazuti Akondise and also then give you the soothing love, you know? So it's, yeah, so that's my take on it. You know what 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 you just said reminds me of it reminds me of what when when you're a healer and um, there are those who work with the light and there's those when you do certain things is you step into the darkness so that's why sometimes when you go and consult a healer you need to confirm oh is this person still in the light nah or are they, or have they stepped into the darkness? Because that's it's so easy for a healer to step into the darkness in the sense that sometimes you think you're doing something good, but actually, is it really? Is it really? And, and they all say, the road to hell is paved by good intentions. Yes, but how do you tell, Coco? How do you tell if if, if a, a healer is still walking in the light side and not in the dark side? I I, I don't think for for a, a lay person it's 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 not that easy to tell. Hence, before you go and consult, we always ask you which you must tell your own ancestors upashe, and ask for permission and say which uya uyo consulta kubani and why. You know, because if they do, do not approve, there will be other intervening factors that will stop you from even getting to that healer. And another thing I would say about knowing the difference is about discernment, you know, so also discerning how it feels within you. And that's why it's so important for you to be in touch with your physical body. Because, you know, sometimes we are always saying, what's umoya wa kutin? which is also a good, um, it's also another aspect, but physically, how do you feel? And what is your intention? Because physically, when I say physically, it's like, is there peace that comes? Is there calm that comes? Is there an unsettling feeling in your stomach? Is there maybe a headache that you quickly get? Like there are physical signs that tell us when you're no longer in alignment and being able to listen to those and also setting out your attention because if your intention is to actually lead in light, you will be able to easily feel when something is no longer in light. And we must also remember, just to add another spanner, there are things that require darkness also, you know, like, yes, there's 
healers that no longer, but there are certain rituals, there are certain forms of healing that need you to tap into that. So it's not all bad of like, no, don't go to the dark, you know, we come out from the dark from our mother's womb. So darkness is not all evil in all aspects, mm -hmm. so to say. It just, re it just reminds me, Oguti, um, Usehmet, the lady, you know, the great divine lady, she is also a, the, she controls the plagues. And, and we've seen that there's a pattern, even now, we, we are currently going through, I would say, inverted commas, plague of some sort. And it's so consistent in how it happens because when this thing started, that's when I got my teachings that plagues normally every hundred years, there's a plague or some form of destruction that actually happens. I mean, the last time we had a plague of this magnitude was during um, uh, the Spanish flu. And before that, it was a hundred years before that, we were plagued by uh, uh, smallpox. And before that, it was syphilis. It's so there's a pattern in terms of the destruction, in terms of the plagues, like diseases that form. And so, yeah, <laughs> darkness is not always um, a bad space. Yes, you know, I'm listening and I'm learning, you know, and as you're talking, uh, Queens, I'm thinking of who, the, what's happening in Congo right now, in, in, in the DRC, with the, with the eruption of, the, of, a, of an earth, of a volcano. Well, it's known that Mount, uh, I think it's Nyiragogo, Nyiragongo, uh, it's, a, it's a, 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 a destructive uh, earthquake, but the last time it happened, it was 2002. Earthquake, it's a volcano. Uh, but somehow I do not know why I related it with something that happened in April in the, in Notre Dame, uh, the fire of, uh, of of Notre Dame when the church burned. They say it was a cigarette, some say it was an electrical fault, some say, and I think earlier in the year, last year, we spoke a bit about, uh, about um, the fire that happened in Australia that destroyed a lot of animals. Was it Australia? Mongols, I think. Uh, we, they, they, there was a... Yeah, that, that, that's that one, but there's one that happened in Australia, which kind yes, of moved there was a lot of there was Australia. Yeah. But anyway, destruction by fire is something that is always somehow related to some kind of divine... It, some divine intervention or some divine force. You know, uh, we, people always say God uses the elements, whether it's wind or hurricane or it's water, the flood or it's fire somehow. So, so segment, I just want to get back to this issue of segment having both destructive and constructive or healing powers. Tina, as human beings, I think as your uh, sisters are you alluding, as human beings, we have both positive and negative uh, 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 aspects of, of ourselves. We have the darkness and we have the light. Now, my issue is how, my question is, how do you make sure that these things are well balanced? What are the kind of practices that we need to focus on so that I am well balanced? I'm not a person who's just always gloomy and into the darkness. But I'm not just only relating gloominess to darkness. I'm just saying that I cannot always just be in the dark and I also cannot always be in the light. But some people would argue that to be in the light is a, is a good thing, it's a positive thing. It means that. Mm, I think we may have lost Menzi there. Or am I the only one experiencing it's revealed, that? everything is, is seen. There's no secrets. Basically, in the light, you're transparent. You know, transparency, or do we also require to retreat into the darkness? What are the things that keep us balanced at the right as a, as a, as a whole human being? Mm. Um, okay. Like for me, I was actually reflecting on this, um, this rising, just in terms of how the seasons and nature, how nature really has just run in such a beautiful order that we can actually learn so much from, is that when you think about it right now, we're entering um, winter. So already from last season, which was Anpu, going into Sehmet, going into Set, um, the next season, these are the winter months. And this is the time of retreating within yourself. And that is the self, um, basically what I call it, it's 
an internal consultation. You know, we're so used to having consultations outside where you go to somebody else, but winter really becomes an internal con consultation. And what that is, is that each season and each sphere of the 12 months is balancing you there. Is balancing you for that because it will come in summer when you are now in Heteru. You can't be having internal con uh, consultation within Heteru mm -hmm. season. You know, you are now social, you are now out there, you are now, you are now out there, you are now yeah. Meet other children. Yes. In to look confirm what you are saying, like we're talking about the season of the plague, as Marcos was saying about uh, Ubani, this whole COVID uh, thing that's happening. Globally, right? A lot of people are saying, "No, it's a time to reflect. It's a time to become, to understand self more, to understand your family more, to do, to deal with things that are more close, more internal, right? Uh, uh, to be reflective, introspective, and all that." So, uh, I see it. I'm agreeing with what you are saying, Uguti. It is a season. This COVID plague uh, pandemic. It's also a season which will pass. But the thing is, as it passes, or as we are going through it, what are we learning? Are we learning to consult with ourselves, or are we still afraid of ourselves? Are we still thinking that span bani, who go span bani, or someone, who talk span bani, or psychologist, someone, or something else out there, uh, has the answers for me? Or are we really comfortable going into ourselves and dealing with other dark forces and other things that are that, that are happening within? Are we? Are we learning from this season of COVID, or are we not learning? Are we learning from the plague? Are we learning from segment? <laughs> or maybe we are thinking when we are not. No, I definitely like. I definitely agree, and I think that's how we find balance. Just to further talk about um, what you were asking, is that how do you find balance between the two? So basically, how you find balance is that you honor the season that you are in and you are able to do the work fully and immense yourself fully, but you don't stay there. The same way we don't stay in being merry and in being, you know, drunk and, you know, we also need to come back to another type of state. And that's how you find the balance. So the, it's a constant, like there was a poem I did actually in matric, which is, which talked about con the, um, constantly walking the tightrope of life. And I think that's what healing, that's what, the whole human experience really is. It's about that constantly trying to find balance and walking that rope between the two sides. I'll, 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 I'll give something to you. Uh, in the words of Babu Credo, once you find the balance, it means you're dead. <laughs> once, <laughs> once you get like the perfectly find the balance, you're, you're dead, you know? Uh, and I thought that was very, very profound of him. Like, of him, it, like, it, Brother Menz. <laughs> okay. So I was, I, I, what Max was saying, it actually gave me like a bit of like some, some goosebumps, you know? And it made me, what Brother Menzi said before, it kind of made me think, Uguti, even with herbs, you know? Like, yeah, I'm that child, I'm the herbalist. Um, <laughs> like you can there's herbs that are good used for goodness and the same herb can also be used for destruction i don't know if it makes sense um if you take for the season uh upele bele is like the you know uh is like the thing you know and i'll be making posts about that uh, upele pele is a good decongestor for your for your for your nasal system. However, if you put upele pele in your eye, wow, <laughs> fire is going to happen. It's a good fire, but depending on how you decide to use it, and pouring a bit of upele pele on your what's this like using a, 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 a lotion that is based on upele pele. It's cayenne pepper that is uh, for those who do not speak Zulu. Using cayenne pepper based uh, uh, lotion during winter warms you up, you know? But imagine using that in summer. There's timing for everything. Hence, Umatlaba says, Uzi, we must not discount everything. Uzi. Yeah, it's bad, it's bad. So therefore, we must not go there. I'd like to add. 
speaking about oh sorry my club you want you can come no just quickly i want to my club, you can speak no i just want to I just wanted to say, in terms of like the cayenne pepper and what. I just wanted to say, in terms of like the cayenne pepper and what. Have a mental okay. yourself. Please mute yourself because it's echoing. Okay, yes. So I just wanted to talk about this cayenne pepper and the actual fire. We actually just have to actually think about actual fire. We're in the home. Think about your own house. If you have a fireplace, you can keep the whole house warm. But that same fire can destroy that whole house and you would not have a home. So it's it's such a, every element, and I mean, all of the elements, you know, be it earth, fire, wind, or air, or which one, fire, okay, yeah, water. I think water. I was saying water. water. Yes. <laughs> all of them are like, have such healing properties and have such, and can come with such beauty. I mean, water, we need water for life and all of that. But then we see like tsunamis and floods. So everything has that capacity within it to go like either way, you know, in terms of being good or being bad. Um, I'll just give it over to I'll you. Give it over to you. Well, no, with that said, you know, the, the issue of the issue of a segment, a is she a destructive force? segment and I'm going to read a passage from Credo Mutua because I opened it for a specific reason. Um, coming from the heavens, coming from the sun, uh, the sun Ura, because she came to establish my art. She came to establish umteto wemvelo, umteto uglunga so she came to establish the, the justice, right? She came to do justice on earth. But uh, she became drunk with her own power. The story says she became drunk with blood, blood drunk. She was enjoying the fact that she can just destroy people and kingdoms and civilizations as a force, as a spiritual force. She was able to do that. But she began reveling in that power and became the power became, it went to her head. And it took again a, a other natural forces, the power of the sun again, to say, uh, "Cool down! Uh, you've done enough. Uh, it's the time for the drought and the time for the destruction and the time for the plague." Says Pedi Lemanjik. Let's get. I, I'm in the same tool that you were using to destroy. Use that very same tool to heal the people. If there are people that, that, that require internal, uh, uh, incisive uh, uh, healing, you are the one. The same one who destroyed them will be also the same one who heals them. So um, that is quite uh, powerful. So Bob Kredo Mutawuti, the time reached balance. I think Bob Kredo Mutawuti there was talking about the fact that don't be arrogant uh, and think that you've arrived. Uh, just because you're a great Kobela or you're a great healer or you're a great, you can be like, what's his name? That Indian guy, Deepak Chopra. You know, Deepak Chopra must come down to earth also and say, yeah. I may know all these things, but I am still just the ordinary human being. I also still need to work on myself, you know, until I transition from the physical form. There is no one who reaches ultimate ma'at. That's why ma'at is a daily work, it's a daily affirmation. Uh, Ubuntu 40, no one can practice Ubuntu totally. Sometimes there are moments of selfishness where you need to say, okay, I'm part of the community, but now it's me time. I need to take care of me. Uh, and if I don't take care of me, I won't be good enough for the community. So there's a, it, it's important to do that. But in the look, Vala, my, my statement with the, what what the room was saying, yeah. in one of the chapters, I don't know what the chapter, oh, it's called, the chapter is called They Who Must Die, right? In the chapter, They Who Must Die, who Koko Vula, Beno, Koko Vula, Beno Ban, Koko Vula and Siluane, Koko Vula and Siluane, they are performing, they're given a task by uh, 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 one of the leaders to say you need to uh, 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 go and heal and amputate legs and arms of people who have been in, in a war. It's a, it's, a, it's a chapter about after a war. Uh, after this war, Kokovula and Siluanias are go, they go into the battlefield where people bodies are lying all over the place. And they have to do the practice of Sejari, in, this is ancient African stories that Baba Kredomoto is telling. But let me just read a quick, a quick, a quick passage. It says here, Meanwhile, Kokovula and Siluane have also begun the delicate task of amputating the man's arm, a task which requires iron nerves and infinite skill. This is a task which few witch doctors seek. 
attempt. Even the best witch doctor loses one out of one out of every three cases. So carefully, Silwan lays the man's arm on the great ebony block used for amputating, and Kokovula starts by cutting out four flaps of flesh above the wound towards the elbow. And then it goes on and on and on. So in this whole chapter, Babo Kledomuta is dealing with both internal healing, like internal organs, but also dealing with the physical part. Surgery in an African way and explains, uses different articles on how to actually perform surgery on 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 on, on just the battlefield that need Right. So again, I'm making an that surgeons and doctors, people like Imhotep, many historical figures in ancient Africa, who are psychological healers, uh, but also healers in the physical body, gave us what are the right foods to eat, what are the right medicines to use, what are the right thoughts to think, what are the right way, what is the right way to actually mentally, physically, and otherwise. So yeah, construction. <laughs> Uh, you can speak. I, I'm lighting. It's my Charlie's time. Yeah. You know, what uh, Brother Ninzi is saying is so profound. You know, um, we often think that things are supposed to always, like it's one dimensional. I don't know if it makes sense. Uh, it's one dimensional view of life where else there's multifacets uh, of things that are going on. And what you're seeing is only one-sided. Um, you're based on your perspective of life. Yeah. Um, I don't know if our guests want to provide input on this part. I was just asking any questions over what we've yeah. just been chatting about. First of all, is it making sense to them, to our listeners, uh, our participants? Just feel free. You can comment, actually ask a question or whatever. Just feel free. There's no wrong questions. So don't be shy. Um, so so while, while we wait, okay. while we wait, uh, I just want to make a, 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 an example. I was asked by uh, Gogo in Zimbabwe to watch a particular film. Uh, I was asked by Lioness, by the way. You'll know if I'm talking about Zimbabwe, I'm talking about some, some Lioness. So she asked me about three or four days ago, watch Assassin's Creed. What? Assassin's Creed. I'm like, why must I watch this Assassin's Creed? I like Assassin's but I don't like game, you know, movie based on TV games because I'm not a TV game person. But there is mythology in all of these stories, the Hollywood stories or stories that are in, 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 in the public eye, in the public, what you call it, mainstream media. So she says, watch Assassin's Creed. So I watched it the first time and I watched it the second time and I still didn't get what she was talking about. Only the third time because she insisted, as you know, she can insist. She insisted that I watch it. And then I watched it. I was like, I was watching it for the first time. Long story short, it's a story of assassins who I order like a Knights Templar, the kind of Masonic order. There is secret order. There is they did it Sanat by Zangoma, but the Zangoma is again. There are assassins of all the people who are doing wrong in the world who are sub, sub, subjecting people to religious oppression or uh, capitalist oppression or war oppression, any kind of oppression. So the assassins they deal with assassinating throughout history, they deal with assa assassinating uh, people who are bad for bad for, for the community, right? So that's what they did. They deal with evil people. They deal with the like decisively with the sword. Now the actual age acquisition, freedom, what they call free will, right? So they are there to protect the important the important uh, uh, um, aspect in human experience of what we call free will. And it's symbolized by this apple called the apple of Eden. I was like, wow, so profound. Three times I watched this thing and I didn't get this. So 
I found that story, even though it's based in in in, in European and Spain, and some the mythology itself is an ancient story, which is we can be found in the Bible and in many other stories, where there's a fruit which is called the fruit of knowledge, but there's also the destruction that goes with. Um, knowledge, yeah, because the knowledge of freedom is also about protecting <laughs> peace. That's it. Protecting peace. This is I found it quite profound. Assassin's Creed. Check it out. Uh, Brother Menzel, I'm going to ask you to switch off your video because uh, from my side, it says your bandwidth is very, very low. Um, so to preserve the communication, um, I'm going to um, ask. I'm going to ask. No problem. Okay. Cool. Um, no problem, Gogo. -go. I hope I have a good profile picture. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, but so the point I was making about Assassin, yeah, Assassin's Creed is just... A different mm -hmm. stories, different mythologies, wherever you find there must be some... defense system and as you the defense you know, to live and let live uh, there's a some kind of balance they might balance okay um so you don't have a picture brother means you don't have to worry about anything but what what's currently happening right now i'm not sure if i'm the only one who's experiencing this i was a bit reluctant to disturb you in your communication because um I keep getting breaks. Uh, network is not being friendly on us today. And that's why mo most of us have our videos off, uh, video feed off, because network is not being nice. And But that's just the nature of life in, in essence. And we just need to uh, accept that. Um, moving on, uh, I wanted to get um, uh, to the point where what Kulumenzi what said earlier on Obuti, um, there is a time and a place for everything, and sometimes you need that vus and to come and do things. And what we're talking about right now is he is we talking generally in terms of healers, but even our own ancestors, Abit, um, you have ancestors who are very vus uh, or very fiery, and you don't just summon them, Jay, you know. If you summon them, you better know what you're doing, you know, and you better do it in a very controlled environment. And you only summon those ones during a time where you are, you need somebody to come and defend you and come be your fighter of some sort. But you also need to have mechanisms in place to say, okay, so we cut so good pants, I don't know if it makes sense. So we cut so good pants, because if you if you keep them like for too long they will destroy everything even the good things because as you said she is she became drunk with her own power and her ability to heal and whatnot and that is partly true with some of us who have healing ability abilities we have the power to destroy a, a life but the thing is we don't have the ability to give back once it sometimes there's limits in terms of powers we we you can't once the spirit leaves the body you can't give it back necromancer is something which is very very tricky however in certain situations it they allow it uh, because it has to happen. I can tell you with my own story, Necromancer is believed worldwide to be something which is bad. But my grandmother prayed for my life and she brought me back to life. And I'm not a zombie. <laughs> I'm here talking to you. I'm not a zombie. And however, sometimes when you bring those things back to life, uh, you get Imikov, uh, you get uh, other weird things. <laughs> but she prayed for my life and she brought me back to life. Uh, do you want to add, Matla? Um, no, I think you've really covered it well also with what um Kulumenzi was talking about, you know, and I think you've also really gave us good um examples in terms of just saying is that there's a time and place for people for 
feelings and for certain things to happen and we need to just honor that. Tamako. Uh, Tamako. Do we have any questions even on the Insta? Do you guys have any questions on Insta? Um, yes, no. We don't have any questions on Instagram. Um, we, do we have any questions? Or it's even if it's not an, a question, but it's just to add on what we're talking about. Um, your input is highly valued. I mean, that's why we have these sessions, uh, the live sessions, so that people actually get to put in their thoughts about certain issues. We don't have any. Okay. Um, no, also nothing on my side that's coming through. Okay. Um, Mkulu Menzi, your closing words about uh, Udabs. <laughs> Unfortunately, he's dropped off. Oh, has he? Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, his network was really bad, and he it was cutting, and I, it's understandable why is it thing he was he would drop off. So for this month, I just wanted us to go through what, 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 what can we expect in terms of the teachings. So we will be profiling uh, different types of PEPA, or Bele Bele, uh, in terms of how their healing properties work. Um, like, uh, in terms of uh, healing properties, Makaba will also be profiling uh, a few uh, crystals or stones. Uh, it depends on how you decide to name them. Uh, yes, so it depends on how you decide to name things, but um, I will be profiling a black pepper, jalapeno, as well as kind pepper, our old friend kind pepper. And it's so profound that during this time, that's just even when you actually need these things, uh, because it's winter for us. And we need that fire to keep us warm. And we also need that decongestion uh, things um yes okay we see oh brother Menz is back with us so um i think he'll take off after me but yes i think we've basically covered it so please look out for this coming week where we will be discussing um the few crystals and how to use them and we'll also maybe just do a quick live just to actually um practically give how people can practically use it every day and not just, you know, give you the information and you're not quite sure how to navigate that. But it's a beautiful season for internal healing, deep internal healing. We are going into the next, this season and the next is really about confronting yourself. As I said, it's that in, internal consultation and we should just really rise up um, to, yeah, rise up to, to ourselves you know we've also got a very, a very powerful full moon that's happening on wednesday the 26th of may which will also really catapult us into this um deep healing and deep awakening but we'll i'll try to get more details out on that please Sorry, mention why it's a red moon sorry the red moon aspect. i did the blood why? moon that's oh. happening on oh. yes so the blood moon that happens on Wednesday, the 26th of, um, of May, which is basically the total um, lunar eclipse. And also, it's a good time to actually do fire rituals right now. Um, uh, <clears throat> like, isn't it like your chisels and whatnot? This is actually one of the best times to actually do the fire rituals because, yeah. Even that, I mean, with the full moon, we know that full moons are about releasing, you know, so also on Wednesday, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, those will be a really good time for you to write down on a piece of paper, all the things that no longer serve you, all the things that you don't want in your life anymore, that you are letting go of. So writing them all down on a piece of paper with, um, and then after that, burning that paper, it's going to be very releasing you're going to feel your physical body feel so much lighter um, and that will be very beneficial so really thinking about what it is that you are letting go of in this because lunar eclipses push us into the next six months of the cycle so you want to be thinking what are you releasing and what are you going to be focusing on for the next six months to come I love 
I love that. Um, it's also, I, I think, Anbu, um, Sehmet, and Set are a perfect time to go into hibernation. And if, unless memory serves, doesn't serve me well, but it's also a time, your in, in, initiation, yeah initiation and a lot of people they get it wrong in the terms we only speak of initiation as in like amatwasa with gobelo but there's other forms of uh stuff of initiation types of initiation that happens i mean we've seen amakweta right now uh, uh go descend descending into the mountain and yeah ascending into the mountains and that's <laughs> Can I ask a question? It's Malafa. Then when you're doing the, can maybe have a teaching on when to do what no longer serves you on paper and when to burn it? So um, that oh, okay. people don't judge with it any time. Okay, so basically it normally is with every full moon. So with every full moon is a time for releasing, for letting go. Um, so every full moon, is a good time for that. But uh, what I can do, I can just do a quick post and post it so people are aware about the moon cycles of what yeah. to do between there. So this time is, and the things that the moon cycles is that there's specific themes based on where the planets are gonna be stationed at that time. And right now, because of it being in a fiery uh, planet of Sagittarius, which is a fire sign, so it, that's why the fire also is really good. But in any full moon, burning um, and releasing is always good. But I think we can just share that out with our community in terms of knowing when to do it. Thank you. It's also this any and you don't make a huge announcements during this time, you know. Uh, because in as much as it is good time for us to release, but during the blood moon, there's a lot of dark magic that or dark rituals that also get performed during that time. So it's a very important time to also protect you as an mm. individual. Mm. Like I always feel also with the lunar, with, with eclipses. So the solar eclipses, we're going to go into that one soon. Um, this is a lunar eclipse. Uh, basically with eclipses, it's, you the the moon will not be like the moonlight will not be visible so it is also called yeah it is a bit of a dark time so therefore i mean personally i don't um charge my crystals out um during eclipses because as people are releasing things there are there, there's also darkness that can get entrapped in what you are charging out there so it's very much about yeah, so it's very much about protecting yourself and it's very much about um, your inner work. So yeah, protection is also a good one. So even fire protection um, rituals are also quite good at this time. Mm. Brother Lens, do you wanna add uh, before we close the session? It's, we have one minute left. No, we give thanks, you know, I'm learning so much just listening with the whole household, my single household is learning from the information that's flowing here. So uh, we look forward to the infographic and for everything that is related to the days and what we do in terms of what other rituals are, are, are doable, fire rituals, hot soup, hot, hot beverages, everything hot, you know? So it's the time of Sagittarius, as the sisters said. So I'm, I, I'm just benefiting from learning, relearning, unlearning, uh, all the knowledge is so useful. And it's necessary in this time. Uh, and I just wanted to just make, mention just one thing. With Africa itself, even though the whole world, the whole of humanity, faces a lot of uh, uh, problems, like uh, uh, in terms of conflict, internal conflict, the wars and all that, uh, the healing enters through the wound sometimes, mm. as they would say. So when the healing enters through the wound, uh, to, you know, so, so there's, there's many different rituals, there's many different ways in order to cleanse the wound also because you cannot close the wound that is not has not had the right medicine inside it so africa i'm saying africa our, our mother country our mother continent africa is always foremost in the in needing that healing because we have a, a, past, a past that has been brutal right so the br brutal past or our brutal experiences that we've gone through 
they, they give us both experience, we've suffered, but because of our suffering, we have gained experience to offer the world, the rest of the world, like various healing methods, various healing disciplines, these healing ways uh, we have learned by experience. So I'm just saying I'm grateful to be African also in this season. Uh, and it is also Africa Month, as they say, you know, when the AU was established in 1968. So I'm summarizing Jay, just to say, I give thanks for being African and for being for learning the things that we are learning together as an African community, global and local. So I'm just giving thanks. That's all. And as a comment. And I think what you're saying is really profound, um, Kulu. What you said at the beginning, it really touched me in deep within, you know, which is sometimes you have to score things for the healing to happen. I don't know if it makes it makes sense. And it would make sense. Or, but in your skirt, it doesn't look like a sword. It's Sigela. I don't know what it's called. It's called. Yes, it's Sigela. Hey. <laughs> I don't know what. Thank you for correcting me. Hey. Cutter, cutter, something that cuts. Yeah, and that, and when you spoke about Uktava, it just made me look at a lot of things. Would sometimes in your life, even emotionally, and even things that happen in your life, sometimes there has to be destruction that happens in order to for the healing to happen. Like you would think, would oh my gosh, why is this happening to me? But sometimes you have to break down things in order to rebuild something new with a solid foundation. Wow. Wow. This is what we are learning. And I think also, sorry. And I think that's also another thing that just speaks about this, um, the eclipse that we're having on, um, the lunar eclipse that we're having on Wednesday, because that's what it's about. It's about that breaking down. And that's what becomes very much difficult for us to accept because we want to hold on so much to old ways but things are going to break down and that is necessary and that is for our better good so it's about saying to ourselves that whatever is breaking down now as Wednesday approaches and things are intensifying until probably the 30th of May we a lot of things are going to be shifting in your life and those shifts you need to be very much aware of because that is where your growth actually lies. And it is painful, but we, as Om Kulumenzi has said, you know, that the light comes through the wound and we have to embrace that. And we have to be able to gently and gracefully fall into the healing. What does our community uh, say? Uh, Greetings have, to everyone. Have, Greetings, Gokos and Mkulu's daughters and sons. Uh, Speak to uh, us. Insta. Insta. Uh, they're saying, uh, they're saying uh, we the fish, hey, guys. I'm a kamase. Apologies if I'm pronouncing this incorrectly. Yes, that's the comment. Yes, a seed must break apart to become a plant. Mm. Mm, love that. Um, do we have uh, before we close the sessions? Do we have uh, from the from side? Is there somebody who wants to uh, say something, uh, parting words about Umaki? Udabs, actually, we didn't. We said we decided which we're going to name her Udabs or Ant because we all know we have Ant baby. Ant baby. Fiery. Fiery. They are central. They are central. They are like the fire in Sam. They are central to our our learning. But I can't just have baby destroy it. My baby destroy him with the tongue. The tongue can be a sword itself. So the tongue itself can cut both ways. You know can tell the truth, but can also can tell a destructive lie. It's important, it's better to, to, to lean towards the truth. So that, uh, because the truth is healing. It's, 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 it's also destroying. Also destroying. Yeah, the, sometimes you uh, can keep quiet. Yes, 100%. And let others speak. So, uh, tell us, Ivalenje, with people, any anyone who has anything to say, anything to comment, you know, just feel free, as we are, we're going to close with you as the, our community. We give thanks for this time. With, yeah, thank you so much uh, to everybody that joined. It seems like we don't have anybody uh, on yeah, Instagram. On Instagram. Instagram. 
we don't have anything. Um, okay, we can close. We can close. Can close, 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 close the session. No, can you close by giving us an announcement for the next, uh, the next session, please? Can any any one of you, Queen, give a, a just any important announcement about our coming sessions? Okay, so okay, we, so we we have uh, spoken to uh, our we so. The next session will be two weeks from now on the 6th of June. Um, we're still confirming with the guest as to whether or not they will be pre-recording because these things, sometimes we have to make time because of people's busy schedules. Um, they, we, 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 we still need to discuss whether or not, I believe Brother Menzi will be communicating with the guest to confirm whether or not it's um, it's a live or it's a or it's a pre-recorded recorded. But hopefully, yes. hopefully it's I hope that it's going to be it's a live. Even if it, it's not during this time. Uh, can you please mute uh, yourself? Okay. So hopefully it will be through the live the lives. We are hoping that yay guys, we get Umkulum Kasha. Uh, he's agreed. Uh, uh, but Brother Menzi will tell us uh, further once he's spoken to him. Uncle Mkaja has agreed that he will come and speak next week on the next session. Yes. Um, also, uh, uh, during the week, me and Matlaba will be doing a live to break down the herbs and the crystals, um, even if it's not during the week, probably before the weekend. Yes. Uh, Matlaba? Your please close the session, my club. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you, thank you so much, everybody, for so joining. Much. This has been really, um, this has been really lovely. Just us sharing, us being able to talk about the season, and actually just realigning ourselves. I think it's so important that um, each month we are able to realize our surroundings so that we are better in tune with what is happening so that we can get the maximum benefit of what our forefathers left for us and what the divine has uh, gifted us. So it's very beautiful. I look forward to sharing in the coming week uh, crystals and how to use the crystals and what chakra point uh, segment is um, activating within us. I will be sharing that in the week on Instagram. And then I'll also be talking more about the lunar eclipse and how everybody can prepare so i'll send out the information about the lunar eclipse before wednesday so by the time that wednesday comes everybody's prepared and everybody can just align their um, energies with what will be happening so that will be coming in the next few days but um, it's a beautiful time to face yourself don't be afraid to face yourself and all those uncomfortable parts within you Thank you so much for joining. Um, I look forward to the two weeks where we're going to get into the actual de more details about um, healing and different aspects of it. Thank you, everybody, for being with us today. May you have a beautiful and a wonderful Sunday until we meet again and we can all connect. May Ra shine on you bright today and forever. Thank you. Togozan. Togozan. Love and light, beloved.